All right, here's a problem where they want us to find the sine of 2a, the cosine of 2a, and the tangent of 2a, given that the tangent of a is equal to 4 thirds and a is in the third quadrant. Well, that's kind of key information right there. a is in the third quadrant. means that here it is right here. Here's the angle a. That degree right here, that whole degree is a degrees. And that means tangent, which means the opposite. 4 is the opposite, but it's not 4, it's negative 4. And the adjacent is in 3, it's negative 3. And so this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So the first thing to do is to write out what your sine of A and your cosine of A are. The sine of A is going to be opposite, again, here's your angle, the opposite over hypotenuse. So it's 4 fifths. The cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse. So those are the things that you need to know, those those three things. Now we're going to use those and plug them into the equations that we get right here. So the sine of A, remember the sine was negative four-fifths, so this is negative four-fifths, and the cosine is negative three-fifths, it's a negative three-fifths, and so this equals two times negative four-fifths times negative three-fifths which equals the negatives multiply together. There's nothing that can cancel on the top and bottom, so it's just four. It's just four times three, which is twelve times two, which is twenty-four, all over twenty-five. Twenty-four over twenty-five. That's the sign. Color code those. Let's do the cosine in blue. The cosine of two a. I'll write it down here, equals 2 times whatever the cosine of A is, which is negative 3 fifths, squared minus 1. There's a couple other formulas you could have used, but it doesn't matter which one you use in this case. So that just equals 2 times, let's do this one step at a time, 9 20 fifths minus 1. And then, again, this is like 2 over 1, so that's like 18 over 25 minus 1, which is really 25 over 25. So that's really negative 7 over 25. The cosine is negative 7 over 25. And does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, the cosine should be negative in that quadrant. And the sine... And the sine... Hold on one second... Does that make sense? Should the sine be positive in the third quadrant? All right, so, and so upon further thought, remember A was in the third quadrant, so double of A. Third quadrant is somewhere between 180 and 270. So 2A, that's where A is between. A is somewhere between... 180 and 270, which means 2a is somewhere between 360, I'm doubling 280, and, five, and 540. It's somewhere between those, which means it's somewhere, if I subtract 360 from this, it's somewhere between 0 and 180 again. So 2a is somewhere between in the first or second quadrant, and the fact that we got a positive sign and a negative cosine meant that it was in the second quadrant. So 2a happens must be in the second quadrant. All right, so back to our problem. Now let's find the tangent of 2a. The tangent of 2a, use that formula up there. I'll change colors once again to green. Tangent of 2a equals 2 times the tangent of a, and the tangent of a was, what was it, 4 thirds? I think. Make sure. Yep. 2 times 4 thirds all over 1 minus 4 thirds squared. So let's do that math on that. This becomes 8 thirds on the top. Remember that's 2 over 1. And this becomes 1 minus 16 ninths. Change that to 9 ninths. And you get 8 thirds divided by 9 minus 16 is negative 7 ninths. Check me if I'm doing it wrong ever. Now flip and multiply, and that equals 8 thirds times negative 9 sevenths. Let's cancel. The 9 and the 3 cancel, so you just have a 3. 
Nothing else cancels, so it's negative 3 times 8, which is negative 24, all over 1 times 7, which is 7. And which makes sense, it should be a negative value because it's in the second quadrant. The tangent is negative in the second quadrant. So there are your three answers for what they want based on the information that they were, you were given.